is the most iconic and probably the greatest train that Britain has ever seen, if not indeed the world. The high speed train plays an important role not just in railway history of this country but in the history of the nation itself. The HST effect transformed the economies of the towns and the routes it served, and indeed continues to serve. But it also plays an important role in the story of the National Rail Museum. Now when I was going to tell this story I had no idea what was going to happen to Sir Ken's train today, so it seems ironic, or perhaps appropriate, that when this museum opened in September 1975, it was opened by His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. He came to York on the prototype high-speed train, HSDT. Unfortunately, he too ran late that day, not because of a herd of cows, but because one of the power cars went on fire. Uh, remarkably, the press didn't pick up on the fact that the rail train had gone up in flames, but uh, he did make it here eventually, and of course, the museum was opened on time. In the following year to the museum opening, HSTs was a kind of now iconic um, styling were tested on the East Coast Main Line between York and Darlington before they entered service. And then, on the 27th of September 1985, the museum's 10th anniversary, a special HST run from Newcastle to London set a new and still standing record for a passenger carrying diesel train, but it performed the journey at an average speed of 115.4 miles per hour, briefly touching what was then a new old record for a diesel train of 144 miles per hour. The following day, the leading power power was named National Rail Museum the first 10 years. We were therefore delighted that last year to mark our own 40th anniversary, that same power car was renamed National Rail Museum 40 years. Incidentally, in 1987, two years after that run, a high-speed train broke the world diesel record yet again on a test run, and that record still stands, a magnificent 148 miles per hour. And the driver that day believed it could have gone much faster if he'd been allowed. So with the introduction of the new Intercity Express train due onto the Great Western Network next summer, it's appropriate also for us to reflect on the history of this train. Um, it's so vital to keep Britain's people and economy moving, and also to celebrate what is a truly great British success story. When these trains were introduced in 1976, Britain went up the world ranking table for, for speed, second only to Japan with their Shinkansen or bullet train, which ran on dedicated, newly built track. HST was working on conventional track at speeds not far off those achieved by the Shinkansen. So we're therefore especially delighted that our friends at Great Western Railway, uh, with the assistance of the 125 Group, have brought to York the first of those HST power cars, now magnificently relivered really, in the celebrated yellow, blue, and grey colour scheme, striking yellow in the high speed of the train, as well as some kind of such an iconic design, gave them the nickname the Flying Bananas. And of course, on the side, you see the famous Intercity 125 name um, picked out. So it's also appropriate that this year isn't just the 40th anniversary of the HST, it's the 50th anniversary of the, of the Intercity brand. And it's a great pleasure that there's not one but two power cars here at the National Rail Museum today. The second one behind us in the North Yard has been put back into its famous 1980s Swallow livery. Um, again, one of the great Intercity liveries of the British Rail era. And you will be able to see that power car outside um, later on. So the ACSD stands as testament to British engineering, innovation and excellence. Today they carry more people, more efficiently and for longer distances than they did even back in the 1970s. Simply put, these world-leading, record-breaking design icons are the most successful trains Britain has ever seen. And we are delighted that we are able to celebrate them here at the National Railway Museum the home to Britain's railway past, present, and indeed future. I'd like to introduce now one man who knows all about the capabilities of the high-speed train. He is Andrew Mellors. Andrew is Engineering Director and Deputy Managing Director of Great Western Railway and has responsibility for the largest fleet of HSTs operating in the UK today. And he's also overseeing the company's fleet transformation programme, which includes the introductions of the HST's successor, the IEP will be introduced next year. So I'd like you to uh, now welcome Andrew Mellis.
much, Andrew. It's uh, absolutely fantastic uh, to be here today and for Great Western Railway to have not one but two of our high-speed train power cars here on display at the National Railway Museum, oh. celebrating 40 oh. years of the high-speed train. It was on Monday the 4th, October 1976, that the first high-speed train services started to operate between London and Paddington and Bristol. And the Great Western really did lead the way for these trains, changing the face, as Andrew says, of intercity travel in the UK, providing new levels of passenger comfort, air conditioning, wider seats, spacious cabins, and of course, much faster journeys. And you can even get a pint of draft beer on board. And just as it was when Bruno uh, built the Great Western Line, the high-speed trains brought the cities of Bristol and Cardiff and Plymouth closer to London. And later it was York, Leeds and Edinburgh that also benefited from that investment. And now, 40 years on, they're still providing excellent frontline services on the Great Western route and indeed across the country. We at Great Western Railway are thrilled to be able to mark this special anniversary by bringing back not one but two iconic liveries that these trains have carried over those 40 years. And my particular thanks goes to the 125 group who have got a number of their representatives here today. They provided us with some real great assistance in original livery diagrams and also some practical help in actually getting the power cars in here today. So thank you uh, to the 125 group. 40 years of service gives us some staggering facts about the performance of these trains. It's estimated that high-speed trains in the UK have travelled over 800 million miles in 40 years. That's equal to four and a half return trips to the Sun. And this particular power car behind us has done about 8 million miles. That's 36,000 return trips between London and Bristol, carrying around 30 million customers across the southwest in the process. These incredible facts also highlight the fantastic job that's been done by teams across the country in maintenance depots looking after these trains. Andrew spoke about British engineering excellence and innovation and the skills of those that were involved in the design and the development of the HST. But I think it's also worth pausing and reflecting on the fact that the skill and dedication of those people in maintenance depots up and down the country has been a major part of the success of keeping these trains going over the last 40 years. Currently on the Great Western Main Line, we're seeing the biggest upgrade of the network since Brunel. And when this modernisation is complete, we'll see a new chapter in train travel, when once again there'll be new levels of comfort and faster journeys, although the draft beer won't be coming back. Once again, the Great Western will lead the way when next year we start introducing those new intercity express trains. They'll start carrying passengers and once again herald the start of another new and exciting era in intercity train travel across the UK. So finally, it gives me great pleasure to present to the National Railway Museum a special plate that we designed to mark this important anniversary. And I'm pleased to say that this plate already displayed on our power car behind us here, is also now going to be carried by other operators of the high-speed train in the UK. A really fitting tribute to this icon of the railway. Thank you.